handful of recent child deaths dominating recent local headlines is creating a rare showing of political bipartisanship. Plus, the local man at the center of a months-long officer-involved shooting investigation appears to have reached a plea deal. And later, how climate change is impacting the way we plant and farm in Wisconsin and what it could mean for the future. This is News 3 Now at 6. We'll take a look at this graph. This is the latest data from the Wisconsin Department of Children and Families showing the confirmed number of child deaths from neglect or abuse over the past 10 years. The most recent in 2020, where there were 27 such deaths. In a week where new child deaths have made tragic headlines around Wisconsin, lawmakers are concerned. Naomi Coles talked with two of them who sit on committees for child and family welfare in the legislature. Naomi, what did they have to say? They weighed in on two recent child cases making headlines in Madison, and in uniquely bipartisan fashion, they believe more needs to be done. We're not going to be able to save every single child, but that shouldn't stop us from trying. Democratic Senator LaTanya Johnson and Republican Representative Pat Snyder have sat on committees for children and families for much of their legislative careers. On February, In a hearing last week, the state's agency that oversees county-level child protective services in Wisconsin presented their annual reports for 2020 to lawmakers. It comes during a time when there have been a number of tragic headlines in the state. I, I do think that we need to get a little bit more of an answer from the Department of Children and Families on, on if we need to help them and their ability to scrutinize a little deeper because uh, any child that, is, that dies from violence uh, is unnecessary. I do feel like there needs to be more statewide protocols that are more consistent. In a case where missing Madison parents are still on the run, accused in their child's death, Snyder took issue with their low signature bond. It's yeah, just a signature bond. I, I just, I understand that we don't want jails overcrowded, but in the same sense, um, do they have other children? In a toddler's death in Madison this week, officers had recommended just days earlier that some children stay with their grandparents, but CPS didn't formally order all from the home. It seems like to me if there was a cause for concern, a feeling that kids were in danger, it should have went for all of the kids. You'll hear more from them and others as we continue digging into the issue of how child abuse is handled at a social services level. Naomi, thank you. Continuing coverage tonight, newly filed court documents show Quadron Wilson has reached a tentative plea deal for a pair of drug charges filed against him. The 38-year-old is the man at the center of an officer-involved shooting case on the city's east side earlier this year. His family says Wilson was shot multiple times during his arrest in early February. Now, according to the documents, as part of this plea deal, Wilson will likely face three years in prison. Prosecutors also plan to charge Wilson tomorrow with possession of cocaine after they say they found him with the drug the day he was shot. According to the deal, Wilson will plead guilty or no contest to both charges. In Iowa County, a jury was selected for the trial of Alexis and Lori Berry. The two Mineral Point women were charged in the 2018 death of 13-year-old Sela Caden, who was in their care. Caden's parents, who live in North Carolina, had sent her to live with the Berries due to behavioral problems at home. The trial is slated to start on Monday. And in Chippewa Falls, the medical examiner there releasing the preliminary autopsy findings in relation to the death of 10-year-old Lily Peters. It shows she died of strangulation and blunt force trauma and says her cause of death was determined to be homicide. A juvenile boy was arrested yesterday in connection and is being held on a $1 million cash bond. And a developing story tonight, fire Fire crews are still working to ventilate St. Dennis Catholic School off Stoughton Road after a fire broke out there this afternoon. They say it started in a lower level storage room inside the school. The building was evacuated. No injuries were reported. Well, let's check your certified most accurate forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Well, there were some showers earlier today. Now most of those are out of southern Wisconsin, but many of the clouds still remain. As we check, check out visible cloud tracking, see there's also been some breaks in the clouds. We had a little sunshine here before, but now the clouds have pretty much uh, thickened back up again. You can see some showers and even a few thunderstorms out to the west in parts of southern Minnesota. It's possible we could see some showers tonight and during the day tomorrow, but the better chances for rain will arrive tomorrow night. Right now, nothing imminent, at least across southern Wisconsin. Low temperatures this morning started out in the middle 30s. High temperatures today 
generally in the upper 40s to lower 50s. The warmer temperatures over the southwestern portion of the state, cooler temperatures closer to 40 degrees out toward Milwaukee. And you can see current temperatures now are in the 50s over southwestern Wisconsin, upper 40s from Madison on toward the north and east. Temperatures will only fall a couple of degrees tonight and then stay nearly steady overnight and climb up to a high of 63 tomorrow. Again, that's the good news, but the bad news, at least in terms of rain, is that better chances arrive tomorrow night into Saturday. I'll have more on that in the forecast in a few minutes. Gary, thank you. Across Wisconsin, dramatic video tonight. A downtown La Crosse building, a total loss after this early morning fire happened inside the India Curry House restaurant around 4 a.m. and grew over the next few hours. There are no reports of any injuries. And in Superior, police want a new camera system to help identify and track down vehicles involved in crimes, but not everyone is on board there. The proposal is for 20 new cameras throughout the city. It's called Flock Safety. The Superior PD wants to test the cameras out in a 45-day trial over the summer. Now, if successful, the department wants them permanently installed. One of the, the main things that we hear are privacy concerns, and we certainly respect that. Um, this system here in particular is really attractive to us because it mitigates a lot of the privacy concerns through thoughtful design. Superior Police presented the camera system to the city's Public Safety Committee last week. It's expected to go before the full council next month. One camera costs $2,500 per year. Labor unions across the country today recognizing Workers' Memorial Day to remember those injured or killed on the job and to push for safer work environments. Today, event organizers in Madison held a hard hat processional starting at Monona Terrace. From there, they attended a memorial service at St. Patrick's Church. Organizers say each year, thousands of workers are killed and millions more suffer injury or illness because of their jobs. And a pretty cool event happening today at the Alliant Energy Center. It's billed as the state's largest sustainable transportation conference and expo, featuring breakout sessions with some of the industry's top sustainable transportation leaders, touching on topics like how to incorporate electric and alternative fuel vehicles into fleets, available state and federal programs to help fund them, vehicle outlooks, and sustainable choices for non-road equipment. Being able to have that diversity in the fuels and not um, having to rely on um, the increases in um, the cost of the fuels is, is really important. It's also for um, our climate and for our air quality. You know, those, these are that are essential right now. Some of the vehicles on hand include an electric recycling truck, compressed natural gas snow plows, a hybrid street sweeper, and a propane-powered Ford F-150. After facing permanent closure, a popular State Street record store it says it has new plans to stay open. B-Side Records, in business for nearly 40 years, says it may have to close. Said it may have to close because of the shop's location was facing demolition to make way for a new five-story multi-use building. But now B-Side says it'll move to a new home, a block away, still on. State Street in September. Madison chef restaurant owner David Heidi says his flagship restaurant in Fitchburg, Liliana's, will permanently close its dining room on June 15th. Heidi says the restaurant industry has changed post-COVID, so he's now making way for two new concepts. They'll be called Ollie's and St. Charles Station. Both will go into the same building. Ollie's will feature accessible farm-to-table food, while St. Charles Station will be a sit-down, fine dining, New Orleans-style restaurant. Heidi says he's already gotten approval from the city for construction. Well, there's something new brewing at Delta Beer Lab in Madison. Starting today, it's offering its new West Coast IPA, brewed by an all-female team, led by assistant brewer Brady St. Marie. It's her first recipe formulation as a professional brewer in collaboration with the Pink Boots Society, which was created to assist, inspire, and encourage women or non-binary individuals in the alcoholic beverage industry to advance their careers through education. Check this out. A restaurant in Wauwatosa is turning to tech to help deal with staffing shortages, and they're doing it with a new robot server the general manager of Golden Nest Pancake Cafe says the robot has been on staff for about a week and so far he says hiring has been a challenge because the restaurant oh, uh, the, since the restaurant opened in 2020 so this new robot addition is designed to help what staff he has not replace them. It allows the servers to spend more time with their customers, which is what our goal is, is better customer service. Servers can't do that if they're constantly running to the kitchen to get food. 
A service tech programs the robot to know the layout of the restaurant, and once a, once a server places plates on the robot's trays, it heads to a table. The robot can run up to 18 hours before needing to charge. The robot also helps keep down the cost of running the restaurant. Well, still to come, a closer look at the corpse flower, which is about to bloom at Oldbrook Gardens. Plus, a News 3 Now exclusive, how a warming climate is impacting what crops we can grow and where. Stay with us. If your bathroom is showing signs of wear and tear, then call Wisconsin's number one remodeler, Mad City Baths. Your trusted local source for high quality baths, showers, and walk-in tubs installed in as little as one day. With premium wall patterns like Canyon Rock, Classic Concrete, and more. Your dream bath is within reach during our spring blowout sale. Save $500 on a new bath or shower, interest-free financing for 12 months, and a $100 Target gift card with purchase. But act now and we'll double your savings. Save $1,000 on a new bath or shower, interest-free financing for 24 months. And double your bonus, receive a $200 Target gift card with purchase. Check us out online at madcitybaths.com or throughout South Central Wisconsin. Call 608-729-4466. Let me give you that number again. 608-729-4466. We're not just massage envy. We're also facials that get your skin glowing envy. We're talking, dang girl, you look good kind of envy. All right, tell me your secret and lunch is on me. <laughs> How does she do it, envy? So what's going on with this? That's because a regular massage envy facial routine is an amazing way to look and feel better for that I still got it going on kind of a feeling. Must be good jeans. This Mother's Day, buy one 60-minute facial session and get a second session free. Massage and be facials, where better begins. When you drive a Honda, the adventures go on and on. Follow your adventures with the thrilling performance of Honda. The brand owners are calling the most fun to drive. Hurry into a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. It's something that everybody should maybe experience once and then decide if you want to experience it again. Um, it really does not smell great. Smells so bad, Susan. You gotta smell this. <laughs> Over at Gardens, getting ready for a big moment. One of its corpse flowers getting ready to bloom in the coming days. This particular flower hasn't bloomed in 12 years. The name, of course, Corpse, is fitting because when it's open, it smells of rotting flesh to attract natural pollinators. Well, as any gardener knows, the easiest way to keep track of plants and trees and where they'll do well where we live is to check the hardiness zones. Yeah, the Department of Agriculture first started printing these hardiness zone maps back in 1960. It's based on average annual minimum temperature for any given spot. And as you might expect, climate change is changing the face of those maps. Here's our Mark Kane. Under grow lights, in sunrooms, in greenhouses, this time of year is filled with anticipation and anxiety. Gardeners and farmers want to plant, but timing is everything. We have to watch the weather every day here in the spring. Yeah. We are more obsessed with weather than Gary, honestly. <laughs> Gardeners are the most obsessed weather people on We the check it 30 times a day. We do. Sure. I have, what, nine apps on my phone? When to plant and what to plant depends on your climate. 60 years ago, the U.S. Department of Agriculture published its first hardiness zone maps. What plants can be grown where based on annual minimum temperatures. There are 10 zones in the continental United States. 10 is in South Florida. The frozen depths of Alaska are a 1. In 1990, southern Wisconsin was a four. The latest maps, released in 2012, moved us up a notch to a five. We're warming up. We've seen that because of the warming, a lot of the plant hardiness zones have already shifted northward. And Michael Notero is the associate director of the Nelson Institute for Climatic Research on the UW campus. I know in the last few decades, they've already advanced about one zone. Um, and likely we're predicted by the end of the century to shift an additional zone in Wisconsin. Um, and that would allow for some species that uh, are more in the central U.S. to potentially be grown in Wisconsin. Under future global warming scenarios, 
Studios, researchers believe the hardiness lines will march northward by 13.3 miles every decade. And that means big changes in farming. Changes they're preparing for here at UW Wisconsin's Foundation Seed Center in Arlington. They develop and grow foundation seed stock, genetically superior seeds sold to producers who in turn sell these super seeds, if you will, to growers and farmers, mostly wheat and oats and soybeans, but that could be changing. Are we growing zones or, or moving north? Then it, it provides farmers the opportunity to grow to corn, soybeans, um, alfalfa, forage crops for for livestock and, and higher value crops. And for the home garden enthusiast, a warmer climate also allows for more variety. It changes the plant palette of perennials that are hardy. In Mostly this, perennials. In this zone. And trees and shrubs. You can more confidently plant lavender now, which is one of our most popular perennials. Um, all those varieties are, are zone five. We've gotten a lot more experimental about things like Japanese maples or interesting red buds. So some of the trees that are a little more uncommon. But a warming climate also makes for more weather extremes, especially if we continue down the path we're on. By the end of the century, um, we'd get much more substantial warming, much more substantial increases in heavy precipitation events, uh, much more intensified weather conditions. If climate change is causing more you know, severe weather events, then plant breeders are going to have to focus on how do we make our our newest and latest and greatest varieties more resistant to these. It'll be like super dry and then there'll be a deluge and there'll be flooding. It's just it's just like a roller coaster. So I think that's what climate how climate change is affecting the gardening industry. In Madison, I'm RK, News 3 now. Another result of a warmer climate is longer growing seasons. The last and first frost are coming earlier and later most years. And 2022 may be an exception. We'll check in with Gary Canalti with our first warrant forecast when we come back. Stay with us. The lowest prices of the season sale is happening now at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Save up to 40% off clearance and special buy appliances. Plus, pay no interest for 36 months. Only at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Inside Ashley off the Beltline in East Springs Drive. For high-quality bath and shower designs infused with microband protection, call Mad City Baths with installations in as little as one day. During our spring blowout sale, act now and double your savings. Save $1,000 on a new bath or shower, interest-free financing for 24 months, and double your bonus. Receive a $200 Target gift card with bath or shower purchase. Check us out at madcitybaths.com. Everything we love about Wisconsin is under attack. As an Army commander, I serve God, family, and country. But the media, they say none of that matters anymore. When I was a kid, every day at school, I took the pledge. In the service, I took an oath. But today, people take a knee. When I was nine years old, my dad handed me a shovel and put me to work. Nowadays, people get paid to sit on the couch. And back then, you called somebody lazy, it was a huge insult. But today, you get a pronoun wrong, and the liberals want your head. I'm Tim Michaels. The radical left, they're destroying everything we love about America. And too many establishment Republicans, they're along for the ride. I'm not some career politician. I'm a self-made businessman who doesn't give a rip about the special interests or their money. I'm Tim Michaels. I'm running for governor to turn Madison upside down and take back the freedoms that make Wisconsin great. Tim Michaels for governor. He'll turn Madison upside down. Hey, everybody, who's coming to the big show? Meet me at Vetty, Saturday, June 11th at Hope Shot Gaming and Casino in Wisconsin Dells for an all-day outdoor event. Come out for classic cars, trucks, and motorcycles during the day and stay for the concert at night. Featuring country superstar Trace Atkins, Runaway June, The Mascot Theory, and Beth Killiman. All benefiting heat and housing for heroes. Visit VetAWI.com for more details. The lowest prices of the season sale is happening now at Ashley. Up to 64% off hot new looks. Plus get an additional 10% off at checkout. Doorbuster savings throughout the store. And pay no interest for 36 months. Only at Ashley.
Areas south of Madison had some rain uh, during the day today, but three things you need to know. The clouds will stick around. There'll be a chance for a shower tonight and during the day tomorrow, but most of the time it'll be dry. We will look for at least a shot of milder weather. That's the good news. Uh, lower 60s expected for tomorrow and for Saturday, but showers and thunderstorms become more numerous, especially from tomorrow night through Saturday and into Saturday evening. High resolution Doppler radar right now, free of precipitation across southern Wisconsin. There are a couple of showers and thunderstorms across parts of Minnesota. Some of those could clip uh, parts of central Wisconsin this evening. The showers that we had earlier now into Michigan and Indiana and moving away from us. But future track rainfall shows the potential for about a quarter to half inch of rain from Friday evening into probably Saturday evening. Some heavier amounts in areas that get a heavier thunderstorm, probably more likely now over southeastern Wisconsin. Some areas there could pick up a half inch to an inch of rain, uh, maybe a little bit more in a few spots. There's also the potential on Saturday for an isolated strong to severe thunderstorm. Storm Prediction Center has a, a center a marginal risk of severe weather, a level one risk, the higher risk down across parts of Illinois. But we'll have to see as a cold front moves through late Saturday afternoon, could trigger a line of thunderstorms moving on through. Temperatures right now still in the 40s, around 50 across Wisconsin, about 20 to 30 degrees warmer to our southwest through Nebraska and Kansas. And dew point temperatures are now starting to get into the upper 40s, around 50 as far north as Des Moines, Iowa. And so as our temperatures increase, we'll also see the dew point temperatures go up, and that's what will fuel the showers and thunderstorms. The storm system we're watching starting to dig into the central Rockies here. That will take a path pretty much right along the jet stream and start bringing precipitation in here by about this time tomorrow. There's a warm front to our south behind uh, much warmer conditions, uh, again, across parts of Nebraska and Kansas, whereas we're on the cool side of the front, but at least that front should make it into southern Wisconsin at some point over the next 24 hours or so and should warm us up a bit. Temperatures north of the front, 40s and low 50s, south of the front, mid 60s to the lower 70s. And as we look at future track, you can see those clouds continuing tonight and through the day tomorrow, but not much in the way of rain chance. It's just a, an off and on chance. Here come the showers and thunderstorms for Friday night into Saturday as that warm front lifts northward. And then as the cold front starts to spiral in, then that's when we could see the possibility for a couple of strong thunderstorms as the front moves on through the wind shift around to the southwest and then cooler weather returns for much of next week. Look for a high temperature tomorrow at 63 degrees. So that's a change from today, thanks to winds picking up out of the south and southeast, and just a chance for a shower during the day. A chance for a shower tonight and tomorrow, but most of the time it'll be dry. Then tomorrow night, the showers and thunderstorms move in. Notice temperatures only dropped around 50, and we'll see highs in the lower 60s on Saturday. Again, scattered showers and thunderstorms ahead of the cold front. That could bring anywhere from about a half inch to an inch of rain from Madison eastward, lesser amounts out to the west. 7 to 10 day forecast, we drop back into the 50s early next week. We'll see just a slight chance of showers on Monday, but better rain chances with maybe even a thunderstorm on Tuesday. Tuesday and another bout of rain from late Wednesday into Thursday and Friday as temperatures cool down will warm up again by next weekend. And coming up in sports, just call Andrew McCutcheon, Mr. RBI. How was big day at the plate? Earn the Brewers another sweep with the Pirates. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Mad City Baths offers a double lifetime labor warranty on all of our bath and shower designs. Check out our walk-in or barrier free showers. Add grab bars and a safety seat or choose a walk-in tub with relaxing hydrotherapy. Don't miss your chance to save during our spring blowout sale. Save $500 on a new bath or shower. Interest-free financing for 12 months and a $100 Target gift card with purchase. But last chance to act now during this program and double your savings. Save $1,000 on a new bath or shower, interest-free financing for 24 months, and double your bonus. Receive a $200 Target gift card with bath or shower purchase. Check us out online at madcitybaths.com or throughout South Central Wisconsin. Call 608-729-4466. Let me give you that number again, 608-729-4466. Just massage envy. We're also facials that get your skin glowing envy. We're talking dang girl 
Well, you look good, kind of envy. All right, tell me your secret, and lunch is on me. <laughs> How does she do it, envy? So what's going on with this? That's because a regular massage envy facial routine is an amazing way to look and feel better for that I still got it going on kind of a feeling. Must be good jeans. This Mother's Day, buy one 60-minute facial session and get a second session free. Massage envy facials, where better begins. It's Chevy Truck Month, and it's time to add the perfect accessories to your new Chevy. Make it bolder. Make it work harder. Make it your own. Find new possibilities. Find new roads. Very well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing on most Chevy pickup trucks. Plus, now during Truck Month, get a $1,000 accessory allowance toward the eligible purchase of a new Chevy truck with accessories. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. A new cafe hits the road to satisfy coffee cravings. Tomorrow, I'm in the 608 to check out the menu and their business plan. And we are planning out the weekend how strong storms could impact your Saturday. That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. The Bucks tip off their Eastern Conference semifinal series with the Celtics on Sunday, and Chris Middleton won't be in the lineup. Mike Budenholzer said last night that the three-time All-Star won't play in Game 1. Now, this morning, the news was even worse. The Athletic is reporting that Middleton's MCL injury is a grade 2 sprain, and he's expected to miss the entire series against Boston. Doug Maughan has seen his share of track and field meets get canceled this spring because of weather. And two weeks ago, Sun Prairie was about to call off another one until he took action by helping out the Cardinals and their opponent with one bus trip to Beloit. Looking good, Icy. Looking good. Spend one second around Doug Mon. You're going to say it with some power. And you'll get a boost. He might be the most passionate track and field person I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. Think of Easter Bunnies. Good. Set. Pretty much 24-7, 365. Go. He's thinking about track and field. We knew we were going to be short bus drivers in the spring, and um, so we got our bus driver's license. Little did Ma know that getting his CDL would come up big Practice early in Sun Prairie's season. Oh, we had gotten to the meet, and he wasn't there, and we were all just one, kind of wondering where he was. Set. The Cardinals soon Go. found out. Ooh, nice one. Ma was on his way to Beloit. Go with a bus. For him to go pick up an opposing team, drive them up here, take time off, I was, that couldn't have encapsulated him more. That was Coach Mon. I know they'd lost a couple other meets due to a lack of a bus driver, and you know, it's, it's no different than our kids. You know, that was the easiest plan was, you know, I, I could get a bus from Cobison and drive down and grab those kids and come right back. And he did. He just hurdled. The meet happened, the kids competed. If it helps those kids have a better day and it helps Sun Prairie, a little bit, you know, I think it's a win-win for everybody. And in the process, they learned a little something from their head coach. It just said to me that you do the right thing when you have the opportunity to, and he had the opportunity to, and it set, it set a great example. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it! Yeah! <laughs> Brewer is going for the series sweep against the Pirates, and Andrew McCutcheon had himself a day against his former team. Ninth inning crew down a run. McCutcheon drops one into the outfield to score two. Part of a three RBI day for him. Brewers get the sweep with a three to two win, and it's almost draft time tonight. Backers two picks in the first round. Will they go receiver, or maybe they'll just they need mess with us and draft another quarterback, it right? It seems like they always do what you don't <laughs> yeah. want. Yeah. Let's go to Gary, final Don't track. have to worry about the Bears. They don't have a draft pick tonight. <laughs> well, we are looking at at least some breaks in the clouds. That's getting a little sunshine in here. On Doppler tracking, you see the rain from earlier moving away. There are some showers and thunderstorms across Minnesota. Could clip us later on tonight. Temperatures right now, 40s, some lower 50s over southwestern Wisconsin. Look for temperatures to hold nearly steady tonight. High tomorrow, 63 before rain arrives tomorrow night. Gary, thanks. Zach will update us on the draft tonight at 10. Thanks for joining us at 6. Hope to see you back here at 10.